the hell out of here. Sometimes you just gotta throw away your couch. On that 10 minute walk, it's important to hit up your 10 minute walk. I'm here to motivate, I'm here to inspire, and I don't even like shooting these videos half the time. Half the time I like it because half the time I like the sound of my own voice. But I, I do it, I do it for you guys. Um, I, I shoot a lot of this content and explain a lot of things to people in order to help. Obviously it helps me, it helps move the needle for me too. And I feel a lot of satisfaction out of all the different people that I've helped. But man, I feel like a 10 minute walk, um, you know, nearly everybody I know can walk. There are some people who have limitations and they can't, but most of you can. And I really think that's a great place to start is to start with a walk. Um, what I'm going to share with you guys right now is the mentality of throw away your couch. Now, um, we did a seminar yesterday, me and my bro Ham, me and Christopher the Boar Bell. Make sure you're following Big Strong Fast on Instagram. He's got a lot of great information. But my bro and I have been doing a keto carnivore diet for quite some time. And we both have had a lot of success. I used to weigh 330 pounds as a competitive power lifter. It was important for me to be big and fat, uh, to be able to bench over 800 pounds, be able to squat over a thousand, to be able to lift the weights and take the abuse that I was dishing out to myself. Uh, I needed to be big, it was important. Mass moves mass, and so I had to be big. Problem is, is I fell into addiction hard fell into food addiction hard not drugs or alcohol fortunately for me but during that time period the only thing the only style of diet that got me out of it was a ketogenic diet because success breeds success and the way that a ketogenic diet works is the ketones help promote ketones when you have ketones uh, flowing through your body it helps promote the diet it's one of the few diets in my opinion that kind of snowballs on itself um, it's one of the few diets that it, it feels so good to abstain away from sugar and it feels so good to be fat adapted that it helps you hone in and focus on the actual diet itself the diet helps promote the diet it's a really crazy and weird thing what I'm gonna share with you right now can be a real game changer it's this idea and this notion of throwing away your couch. Now, a few years ago, I had to actually throw away a couch because I shit on the couch. Whoops-a-daisy. <laughs> I, I, I had an accident. I, I, had, I had what's called double dragon going on. I was, uh, stuff was, uh, you know, shooting out of uh, both ends. How dangerous does it look to, look to be on these railroad tracks? I just realized I was going the wrong way for a second there. But anyway, uh, yeah, I had double dragon. I was throwing up and shitting simultaneously. I didn't know which way to turn. And uh, I was throwing up so violently and I was so sick that I couldn't make it to the restroom. And I thought I threw up and pooped enough, but apparently I didn't. And I went to lean forward to throw it up into a bucket that was in front of our couch and I shit the couch <laughs> and so that couch was a goner but recently I had somebody uh, come up to me and tell me that they um, they really struggled with weight loss and they were like I lift every day I even do some cardio but I sabotage myself I have a hard time with the weekend I have a hard time with birthdays I have a hard time with a couple of things in my life and they said, but even when I've gotten past that, I still will self-sabotage myself at the end of a day. So what they said was they would get through an entire day when they had to eat in front of other people, uh, they, they did a good job. When uh, the motivation of the day was settling in and starting the day, it was easy for them to kind of settle into 
some eating that 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 fit a low carb lifestyle and they were able to follow through with it but what happened is they'd have a, a day of work they'd have a day that went by maybe they got in some exercise early in the morning or maybe they picked up a training session on their way home from work they got home they saw the kids they saw the wife and then they fell back into this trap which this is being done in many many homes wait for everybody to go to bed and you you sit there and you eat on your couch as you're watching tv and that's what this guy said is like he'd wait for his kids to go to bed because he was kind of shamefully eating and this guy was 350 pounds and as he was what's up how's it going shooting a live video over here <laughs> um and uh so as the, the um you know, this guy was explaining that was his main problem, his main trouble. And so I said, I said, hey, dude, you know what would be great? Just fucking take your couch and throw it in the garbage. Throw away your couch. Now, I realize that that sounds crazy, but that guy has since lost 90, over 90 pounds. And he said that it helped change his life. He said it changed his relationship with his wife. It changed his relationship with his kids. It changed his employment. Uh, he now has moved up uh, in his job. He has more energy. He feels better. He hits the gym more. He's more consistent on everything. He still has a cheat meal every week. He still is uh, living his life the way that he wants to live his life. So what if something as crazy as throwing away your couch... I understand sounds like sounds like a lunatic but how much of a lunatic do you sound if it's something that changed your life forever it changed your depression it changed the self-judgment you place on yourself every day it changed your self-doubt it changed the fact that you didn't have as much self-belief it changed the fact that you didn't have any self-respect for yourself it changed everything. This guy simply removed his couch and all instead of like, you know, being really rational about it and throwing away the TV and everything, which is another method you could do. Because who needs a TV in every room? Is it really that necessary? You walk into someone's home and you see a TV in every room and you see a couch in front of it. What does that tell you? It tells you people are just laying around a lot. Now, look, I, I got all these things. I'm just, but I've also have slayed the dragon not the double dragon but i've also slayed the dragon i, I slayed the inner demon it doesn't exist anymore i i beat mr resistance back to the deepest darkest recesses of hell like our boy the ultimate warrior would say right i beat the cravings back i beat the hunger back i beat all those things and now i'm healthier and i'm in better shape and i'm i feel amazing and and in addition to that when i was 330 pounds I didn't have financial freedom like I do today. I have financial freedom and I have fitness freedom, which is something you don't hear people talk. I have freedom of health. Like I feel healthy enough to go do and try anything. I'm actually thinking about starting up some running, believe it or not. So, you know, what if the decision that you make, what if it, it might sound crazy, but what if it's something that changes your life forever? Even the lifting that I've done over the years. Oh, oh, you're still doing that stuff? Oh, Bell, you're still doing that power lift? I can't believe it. You were, you were doing that shit in high school, bro. Oh, my God. Like, aren't you worried you're going to... Dude, you're going to totally blow out your back. Oh, my God. You don't even make any money doing that? Oh, my God. That's so stupid. You know how many times I've heard that? You know how many times I've ignored that? And leaned into it further and said, okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're a genius. You're smarter than me. You went to four years of school at fucking Maris College in Poughkeepsie. Great. Good for you, dickhead. <laughs> I'm going to keep leaning into what I'm good at. And I'm going to keep going vertical with this. Rather than trying to. You know, rather than trying to spread out, spread myself thin and 
work for somebody else and figure out how all that works. I just kept on figuring out what works for me over and 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 over, and over again. No matter how dumb people thought it was. And it, you know, I'm fortunate in a lot of ways. It ended up working out the way that it did. But it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication. And it took a lot of ra- it took a lot of irrational, what looked like irrational decisions to do things like throw away a couch. To do things that other people would view as crazy. When other people view what you're doing as crazy, that's when you know you're on the right track. The, the crazier the idea, the stronger the ability and the stronger and more powerful the opportunity might be to change the lives of hundreds, thousands of people, and maybe even change the world. Elon Musk, is he normal? No. <laughs> Elon Musk ain't normal. I want, I want people to embrace some of these things I'm talking about. I, I want people to understand that the only way to get started on something is to start. The only way to get started on something is to start. You got to do this. It's, it's that. It's the one foot in front of the other. The only way you're going to be able to advance is to lead in, lean into what's impeding you. The obstacle is the way. What stands in the way is the way. What stands in your way is the way. What's standing in your way? What are these triggers? How do you safeguard yourself around your house away from being so fat? Somebody might be like, oh my God, I got so many treats in the pantry for my kids. Well, first of all, that's not great parenting. That is, uh, I mean, I don't want to make over, you know, I don't want to make it too, sound too crazy. But uh, why do you have stuff for your kids that you won't even eat? That doesn't make any sense. Why are you poisoning your children? I mean, it's just not... You could have fruit. You could have vegetables. You could. There's so many other options. You don't need to poison your children with too, many junk, too much junk and too many treats. And to be honest with you, you shouldn't have a pantry. Why? What's it for? Why does it contain a supply of food like that? That's um, just a, a massive overabundance of, uh, of food. You don't need that much food. You got plenty of food on your body. You got enough food on your body to last you years in some cases, right? Start making decisions that other people might view as irrational. Go walk two hours every day if you're fat. Like just stop being fat. Figure out a way to stop being fat. The reason why I talk that way, the reason why I say fat like that is because I think that people think the word fat is like so toxic and they think it's so awful. They think it's as bad as a word like rape and it's not. People are fucking fat. You know, there's, there's worse words. But you are what you think you are. You are your own thoughts. You're, the, you're your own byproduct. You are what you want to be. Because you, you get what you put out. And what you put out is an effort. And what you, what you put out every day is, an, is these repeated efforts over and over again that make you the same as you were yesterday. And I'm trying to teach people how to get out of that. I'm trying to teach people that the only way to have success is through progress. And the only way to have progress is through getting started on something. And the only way to get started on something and to have progress is to have consistency. And the only way to be consistent is through the practice of inconsistency, which means it's gonna be hard. That means it's gonna be tough. That means you're gonna mess up. That means you're gonna make mistakes. And that means that you have to over and over again teach yourself how to get back on track. How do you get back on track? One step at a time, the same way that you started. Whatever the impedance is, that's going to be the thing that's going to advance you. What's the hardest thing? What's the hardest part of your day? The hardest part of your day is at night. Hardest part of your day is after dinner. What if I busted into your house at 8 p.m.? Would you be watching Netflix, eating something that you shouldn't be eating? Probably so. 
probably would be. You probably just barge into just about anybody's house in America at around eight o'clock and they would probably be eating and doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Sitting on the couch eating cereal. Why do you have cereal? Throw it away. Why are you the same or worse every day? Why? You don't have to be. It's a decision. It's a choice. You, you have what you want because that's what you put out. You make the amount of money that you want to make because that's the effort that you put in towards making money. You, drive the, you think that you drive a car that you don't want, but you've done everything. You, you have aligned everything up with that car. Today's Sunday. I love football more than anything. You know what I'm doing? I'm working. I came down here to a coffee shop. I worked for an hour. I got up and I decided to hit up another 10 minute walk. And now I'm talking to you guys doing more work. Rest and recovery for a warrior is going to work. And the weekends is where you pick up more points on the scoreboard. They talk about working overtime. Or if you've ever been on this, you ever been on a movie set or TV set and you got a SAG card, you get double and triple pay. You get bonus pay. This is where you pick up bonus points because nobody else is working. Nobody else is doing anything. And this is where you get to think about yourself if you don't work on the weekends. Whatever days you have off, you're going to want to do the same thing. Because at work, you can't think about shit. The time to learn how to sprint really fast isn't while you're being chased by a lion. The time to learn how to think for yourself and about yourself is not while you're at work. The time to learn how to squat 405 is not when you have is not when you have 405 pounds on the bar. The time to learn it and practice it is when you have 315 and 365. Oh, I'm going to push into it like this. You can't change the form and technique of you rounding your shoulders over when you unrack 405 pounds. You can't change it as you go through the range of motion. You want to talk about precision. You want to talk about being precise. Do you have any idea how much precision and how precise you have to be when you're doing something on a high level? When I squatted over a thousand pounds, one misalignment and you're done. You're toast. You're blowing out your back. You're getting hurt. There's no doubt. There's no question. But it was through practice and it was through work and it was through consistency that when I got on the platform, it was already done. I could picture myself giving myself a pat on the back, congratulating myself on a job well done for a lift that I made that I smoked because I played it through my head so many times because I was prepared for that moment and I put out what I needed to put out to get what I wanted. Are you putting out what you need to put out to get what you want? Or are you complaining about not having certain things, things not being fair? You plateaued with your weight loss. Well, you plateaued with your weight loss because you stopped working as hard. You're gonna have to try, you're gonna have to try something new and something different. What'd you do to lose the weight in the first place? You tried something new, you tried something different, correct? Right? You with me? Page 43. And in order to continue to make progress, you're going to have to do something new and something different. The ideas and thoughts that brought you to one place are not going to bring you to the next. They won't. They can't. Because you got to evolve. you got to keep making progress. Throw away your couch, ladies and gentlemen. What's the one thing that you can do? What's the one thing that you could get rid of? What's the one thing you could abstain from? For me, it was carbohydrates. Starting a war on carbs changed my life forever. What if something like that can be the thing that changes your life forever? What if something like that can be the one thing that changes your life forever? What if that's true? Does not eating carbs sound so crazy now? Does it? I don't think it does. I'm out of here. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch y'all later.